Okay. Now we look at uh, just now we look at elastic impact and plastic impact before the break. Now we continue uh, looking at <coughs> how we solve the VA2 and VB, VA2 and VB2. Previously, we are having this equation, the coefficient of uh, restitution. We arrive at this one, right? So inside this equation, the constant for uh, restitution, you have VB2 minus VA2 divided by VA1 minus VB2. Sorry. And then from this equation, you solve using this one inside here. <coughs> You're actually solving simultaneous equation. Why? Because this equation, you have two unknown. This one also you have two unknown. <coughs> so this one you'll be you'll be given one number here. All right? You'll be given one number here is in the range of zero to one. If we meet together, it doesn't move. This one becomes zero. This one you move up, multiply zero. So you have zero here. VB2 will equal to VA2 if joined together plastic uh, collision. If it's one perfect plastic, then this one you move to here and equalize the equation. All right. So basically, you are two equation. You solve simultaneous equation, and you can find your VA2, VB2. We assume that the E is given, but normally E will be given. We have done with the uh, straight line impact. All right. Next, we look at oblique impact. Eh? So oblique impact both coming in and collide with each other at a certain angle. All right. And take a short note at your tutorial handout there. For oblique impact, we assume they happen between two smooth particles. For oblique, oblique impact over here, we assume the two body is having smooth surface. So that we don't need to consider friction effect uh, and loss of energy dimension. Okay, so we already explained the oblique impact just now. However, this one will be more information inside the diagram. So A and B coming in different direction with a certain angle by referencing to the line of impact. And you're given X positive to the right, Y going up positive. X axis is your line of impact and line of impact crossing the center of the body. Theta 1 represent angle for object A. Phi 1, or you can say as, uh, yeah, Phi 1 represent for B. 1 always represent before. 2 represent after collision. So that's why you have sub 1, sub 1 here. 2, 2, 2, 2 means this one is after collision. Okay. Normally your VA1, VB1 will be given. So if you can understand the previous example, which is moving in a, uh, the straight line impact, this one you only, what you need to do, you just need to remind yourself when you have anger, you have x and y axis, what you do? You split the component into x direction and y direction. The step will be the same as what we covered just now. Okay, if you solve oblique impact, what you need to do? Additional, additional steps is that you see 
all this velocity magnitude, you split into x direction and y direction. Same with after velocity a and b, also x and y direction. All right? You, you know how to do that uh, before uh, in a static already. So it should be no problem for you. Only need to see the question or see the problem here as x direction and y direction. Okay. So here you have uh, in the diagram here, you have four unknown. All right, you have four unknown. Where is four unknown? You don't know the VA2, you don't know the VB2, you don't know the angle of theta2, you don't know the angle of phi2. Meaning these four unknown, one, two, three, four, you don't know. Okay. Normally angle one, phi one, the angle for A and B before will be given, velocity will be given. You need to find the four unknown after. Okay. Or if you work in the forensic uh, department, uh, if you work in the uh, police uh, traffic investigation department, normally what you have is after the incidents, you view from the video recorder, you have the final velocity and angle of impact. You predict how the object meet together in car accident. If you work in forensic, eh, you re-engineer what you learned today. Okay, what we learned today, you have given the before, we estimate after, but when you go to work later on, uh, so lucky you are in the forensic department, traffic uh, forensic department, uh, means uh, accidents uh, investigation department, you work from the real data. This is what you can get from the camera or from the dash cam. You can measure the angle of the accident, velocity of the accident, all right? You predict what happened before. Okay. So I'm not sure whether I give you this one in your handouts, but you can copy. Uh, copy the top one first and then you copy the below one. Okay, so A and B. So you are still looking at principle of impulse and momentum. Again, what mean by principle of impulse and momentum? You look at individual object. If you use principle of impulse and momentum, that's why on the screen here you see A and B. You're still seeing momentum, impulse before impact, equal momentum after. This is called principle of this is called uh, principle of impulse and momentum, but in diagram form. It will help you to solve your question if you're able to draw something like this. And it's important for your final exam. Again, I stress this one. It's important for your final exam. This will be one, one of your steps in your final exam answer, right? Uh, of course, the numbers will change, right? But you, you will go through this calculation. So if you use the principle of linear momentum, uh, linear impulse and momentum, you calculate momentum before MV plus impulse, we use FT equal to momentum after impact. So how you find this diagram, how you, how you calculate this diagram, you split your V1 here into X component and y component with by using the angle one here. You can find right uh, this one. Y and X. Okay, V A X here. V Y X uh, V A Y one. Impulse is this way. 
okay, in pulse of it x equal to momentum after a also here a this is the resultant of your velocity you can split into y and x okay this arrow here split into y and x so that's why you see your velocity y and x okay in test or exam be careful on your notation the way you write the notation Okay, one means before, two means after. So for under chapter impact, be careful on your one and two notation. Eh? Don't simply use one and two in your in your answer. If you if I see one in your answer, I means uh, what I understand in your answer is you are referring to before impact. It doesn't refer to object one or object two anymore. Eh? When it comes to impact chapter or impact question, be careful on your notation sub one and two. In this chapter, if you write one, what I understand is before impact. If you write two, you are saying to me that you're actually explaining after impact and not object one and not object two. Be careful on your notation. And label clearly what is A, what is B, referring to individual object. Huh? So if you understand A, you do the same for B by using principle of impulse and momentum. Still the same, momentum before plus impulse equal to momentum after, but split in Y and X direction. Okay, the arrow go here, go up, Y, because of this one for B, this is y, this is x. That's why you see arrow go here and go up. In pause, move to the left. Uh, sorry, move to the right and not to the left. It's different uh, between A and B. B is pointing towards B. Uh. Equal momentum after. Also split this magnitude resultant here into y and x so i believe you already copy down these two diagram so inside this diagram what are the parameter you know v you know v before you know for both a and b you know so this one you know mass you know so basically this one you solve already this one you solve already because angle will be given so basically, you can solve this one, become one constant value already. Force of these two later, you need to find. These two is impulse. And again, how you link impulse together by the restitution small e constant that we learned before the break. You link this one and this one uh, together. Huh? But this one is before. Huh? This one is before. Then you need to find this one, this one, this one, this one. Okay, basically you have four unknown in this diagram. I'll move forward, huh? So this basically is the, the guidelines to solve oblique impact question. Huh? We will have an uh, example for each one of it. Okay. So we have explained two types of impact. Huh? Okay, we have central impact and oblique impact. Huh? Already explained what is central, what is oblique, and how we solve it. Now we look at Example seven. <clears throat> In your tutorial, you have all the information. So what you have here is that you have a datum, not datum, but you have a object with a line and you pull the A from line of impact. 
A here and then you let go okay you let go the length from the point of reference to A will always stay at one meter it will hit at B here you are given a line of impact so just to give you a hint you look at a question you already know this one fall under which chapter you see line of impact there's only one section in chapter four that give you line of impact which is the impact section Right. So the question asks you A, I've given you A, the mass is given. Release from rest. You're given the velocity before impact. It release from rest. Position at zero. So you measure zero degree from here. After falling to 90 degree, meaning from here to here, 90 degree, it strikes a nine kilogram box B. Okay, three kilogram hitting a nine kilogram box. If the coefficient of restitution E is given, 0.5, determine the velocity of the back and box just after the impact. It gives you the exact moment you need to find. Velocity and back just after the impact. What is the loss of energy during collision? The question extend a little bit, ask you about energy. Okay, before you solve, you look at the question. What is the motion of A to B? Is it linear motion or is it a curved linear motion? A to B, how it move? Straight line or curve? So if, if curve, what do you need to do in your free body diagram? If it's curved straight away, you need to draw two axes, which is the normal and tangent axis. Huh? That one fall under curved linear motion chapter that we learned in your either chapter three, when you learn about your curved linear motion. So this one, you have to come into your mind already. Huh? But before you solve, you should see the whole picture. How the object move, if it's Straight line, then you use straight line equation. If it's move in curve of collinear motion, you you have the free body diagram specific design for curve linear motion. And then this question asks you about energy. What are two types of popular energy we learn? Kinetic and potential. So when you move an object, this is line of impact, or you can say as datum. You move above the datum, you charge up the energy, and you let go. Potential change to kinetic. Okay, these are the concepts that we combine into example seven. How we solve? Okay, before you solve, you have to identify either is a central impact or oblique impact. So this one is central impact, right? Because how the two object impact when a swing meet at this point a and b move a long straight line although it's curved huh? although it seems like a coming from an angle but when a hit b when a hit b both collide in a straight line they collide at the line of impact, it fall under central impact. So don't complicate the question. Huh? Right? Both meet in the straight line. Okay. So before analyzing, the first, you need to find the velocity of the back just before it strike the box. You need to find the velocity of A just before it strike B with this, this one. You need to find VA component. The speed from here doesn't matter anymore. What is important, you need to solve for velocity of back and box just before uh, just after the impact is a velocity before the impact 
Yeah. So I draw a free body diagram of A swing in a collinear motion. I put in datum. Datum swing down one meter. Why one meter? Because my object was tied to a fixed string here with one meter in the diagram. So I can know from here, swing to here is one meter. So that's why one meter here is my free body diagram. My datum is from <clears throat> the releasing position, swing to 90 degree. I label this one as zero initial and this one as position after. Right. Uh, I label as one. This one zero. Why I use zero? Because again, in the impact chapter, one is always represent before the impact. So that's why I label this one as one. I use this one as zero. Yeah. That's why I don't use this one as one and two because if I use this one, one and two, later I substitute this one in my calculation later, it's going to confuse myself. That's why I label this one as one. Because I need to use this value at one here to solve for velocity of the pack after the impact. So this one I label at zero before I release the sandbag. So I draw free body diagram. The weight of the gravity the gravitational acceleration. <clears throat> w equal to mg, holding down. Same W also. Weight doesn't change. Right? W point down. Then I start to solve already. I use conservation of energy means there's no change of energy. There's no loss of energy before my sandbag hit B <clears throat> because I need to find the velocity at that point. So I use kinetic energy plus potential energy before equal to energy after. So P sub zero, which is at this point, V Zero means potential energy equal to kinetic energy after the movement plus potential energy at position one. You know the equation for kinetic energy, right? Equal to half mv square. Kinetic energy equal to half mv square. Potential energy equal to mgh or wh. You just need to substitute the value half mv square plus wh or mgh equal to the same mv square plus mgh but notation be careful before i use zero after i use one substitute before it at the datum position zero there's no velocity and here mgh y zero why is zero here let me ask question you should be expert in the energy chapter uh Sivendra, are you there oh, yes, sir. Sir. yeah Sivendra, why in my calculation here my potential is zero. Why? Eh? Why my potential I put zero here? So when draw what is the equation for potential? What is the equation for potential energy? Uh, MGH. 
MGH. How do you get zero in your equation? You, you, you understand the MGH, but how your equation becomes zero? What what is what MGH? You have three unknown net MGH. Can your M become zero? Can your G become zero? Can your H become zero? Which one is zero? Uh, only the H, sir, because... Okay. Why? Why H0? It's falling, sir. Falling zero. But you raise something from a position, right? But why zero? Why your H0? How you measure your H, you tell me? MGH, right? How you measure when your it's, H? When it's above ground, only, sir, then you can measure H. Okay. You always measure from ground when you calculate uh, energy for this module? I know, sir. You, how you measure? When you, when you talk about energy in chapter 3 or chapter 2, how you measure your H? Uh? The answer is inside this slide, sir. You haven't mentioned the keyword here. How you measure your H? Or where is your ground in this question? The, no, the, the question first, the, gave, first, the first point. Uh, yeah, but you haven't mentioned the keyword that I'm looking for. Where, which line that you are referring to? Ah, uh, datum, sir. Uh, okay. The keyword is datum. If you calculate potential energy or conservation of energy, you always look for datum. It's not ground, it's not object you're referring to. Huh? Important. Huh? Don't make this mistake in the coming test or exam. All right. Your lecture is going to create a question that's going to confuse you. So that to test your understanding. If you confuse, means you don't understand. And what happens if you don't understand? Means you need to redo this module. Means you don't learn anything. And you need to show us that you understand so that you can progress in the next uh, related module. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is always linked with the velocity. That's why zero. Why zero? Release from rest. Uh, where is it? Okay, I delete already. Okay, so again, uh, potential energy, MGH, you're referring to datum. Uh. You're released from datum. So datum zero. That's why zero. Then after, at this point, mv square half m is given 3 v is va at this position right so i should have va1 okay i should have va1 square plus mgh then only i refer to the term mgh m3 g 9.1 1 my h is 1 how I get from one, I measure from datum. I measure from datum is one. Okay. And of course, as you learn, as you learn previously, what happened if your object is below datum? Your energy is negative. Huh? I think I make a mistake here. But anyway, let's see how we do. Huh? If your object is below, yeah, I think I have a mistake here. My kinetic energy at point two is negative because my object is below datum. Okay, my object is below datum. That's why my potential should be negative. There's a typo error or there's a typo error over here. It should be negative one or 
negative here, this one positive, right? Uh, what is important is that this this component here, because it's below datum, we have a negative potential energy. If it's above datum, then you charge up the energy, you get positive. All right, so we stress this one so many times in potential energy chapter. So don't make me mistake anymore. I have a typo error over here. It's not positive, it should be negative. Then you rearrange the equation, solve VA at this point equal to 4.4 something meter per second. In the test, minimum two decimal place, maximum recommended three decimal place, not more than three in test or final exam answer with the unit. Eh? Again, if you forget about the unit, 50% discount for the marks. If this one two marks, you only score one mark for the answer. Okay, any question for conservation of energy? Question? Sylvendra, are you okay? Yes, sir. Understand, sir. I forgot that datum equals the ground. So. Mm, okay. Right. So we all we forget lah, but when it comes to test, don't forget. Lah. When it comes to exam, don't don't forget. All right. Yes, sir. Okay. So um uh, yeah. Once you find your VA, you go back to the question asking you, you draw the free body diagram. Just before the impact, you draw A, you draw B, and before impact, B doesn't move, so VB10. So VA, you, VA1 you define, all right? So you use conservation of momentum. Okay, VA1 you just find. So as you can see, you're going to snowball. So if you uh, wrong in section A, you find the wrong VA, VB, uh, the section B, C will be wrong already because you're going to use this value in your answer. Okay, so just before impact, the free body diagram will look something like this. VA in the velocity move to the left with 4.429 to the left. Huh? And then your VB is zero, it doesn't move. And I label this one as one, it's before the impact. I label as one. So VA1 is 4.4, VB1 is 0. Then you solve for the conservation of momentum. And in this case, we assume after impact, both object move to the left. Okay, we assume uh, A, B, when they hit together, both join and move to the left. This is what we assume. Huh? Meaning, if we assume this one, our velocity, when we find positive, our velocity will be positive to the left. Okay. So this is another free body diagram. After the impact, VA2 will move to the left. This is just a uh, illustration. So free body diagram for before impact, free body diagram after impact. I label as one before, label as two to reason after. So after impact, both move in VA2. Or maybe uh, just after, lah. just after means both uh, move in the same velocity, uh, VB also. So uh, in this case, right, in this case, it doesn't say that it's coupled together. Uh, so to be safe, we assume we have two velocity, VA, uh, VA and VB. So we write the conservation of momentum, momentum before equal to momentum after. So since we have two objects, that's why you have momentum A, plus momentum B before and after also have two objects, momentum A plus momentum B. Be careful on the notation. If you write one means before, if you write 
2 means after. It no longer refer to object 1 or object 2 anymore. So be careful in your notation. Eh? So you have your m, you have your m, you have your velocity, this one, you have velocity, this one. You don't know this one, you don't know this one. Okay. You rearrange after substitute, you get one linear equation here with two unknown. Rearrange in, you can write in either VB or VA, doesn't matter. Important that you have one equation here. Then what you do, you use the given coefficient of uh, restitution given by this one, but we switch the direction positive to the left. Okay. Yeah? In the previous example or in our lecture, our positive direction is to the right, but in this case, to for our convenience of uh, calculation, we flip our positive direction to the left to agree with our hypothesis here, where we assume direction moving to the left or is positive. So that's why I label here with a yellow color, just to remind you. In our case, we assume our positive direction is to the left, given by your relative velocity before, uh, after, div uh, divided by relative velocity before. Okay, take the post, uh, big number, VB2 minus VA2, divided by big number again, a positive value of bigger value, VA1 minus VB2, uh, VB1. Here, you are given this value, this one given in the question. You don't know this one, you don't know this one, but you have this one, you have this one. You have two linear equation solving VA, VB. Don't chase after the numbers. Uh. Try to understand the concept or principle we use here, strategy we solve here. Okay, we use conservation of momentum we use definition of coefficient uh, for restitution. We get two linear equation, soft VA, VB. Okay. You have two linear equation. So you have VA2 equals something, VA2 equals something. So since these two are the same, you put this one Inside here, you solve VB, after solve VB, solve VA. Okay, so this one for under mathematics. Huh? So you solve these two, VA equal to minus 0.5 meter per second, VA2, you get positive. Uh, so uh, this is the same meaning, lah, huh? same meaning. So what mean by negative? Because you assume going left is positive. When you get negative answer, what does it mean? It means VA bounce back to another position. You can write this answer. You can write this answer, but you can you must know the direction of your velocity. You flip into positive magnitude, but the direction is moving to the left. Ah, sorry, moving to the right. Okay, yeah? this is important eh, when it comes to uh, degree level. You should able to understand the positive meaning, negative meaning. What does it do to your direction? Eh? It's part of the assessment. Eh? You should able to explain what does it mean by negative, what does it mean by positive, and the unit also. Eh? Okay, we saw for VA already, VA2. Substitute back to the previous equation that give you VB. So your VB equal to 1.66, but to the left. So from here, you solve your VA2 and VB2. Okay. 
So once you find, you still need to solve for loss of energy, right? Once you find your VA, VB2, right? Loss of energy, you're applying principle of work and energy that you learned in chapter three. Principle of work and energy. Before and after. You still remember this one that you learned? All the kinetic energy plus potential energy equal to kinetic energy after. Okay, this is what you learned already. You just need to apply here. So you need to find the loss of energy. In this question, loss of energy. So you just flip, rearrange the equation, put this one to the right hand side. So T2 minus T1. What is T kinetic energy? What is the equation for kinetic energy? Half mv square. Velocity 2 minus velocity 1. You already have before and after. The rest is just substitution. All right. Uh, I think I'm very kind to you. I give you the detailed calculation here. Half mv square after impact. 1.68. You just calculate. Plus half mv square this one okay although you say oh this one is negative right but why i still didn't put negative here because when you square negative value you still get positive and energy doesn't loss energy always positive take note on that huh? Energy always positive. Minus before. So before you have only have VA is moving. Four point something. VB doesn't move. That's why behind here actually I should write plus zero. Uh, but you know, I uh, understand. Uh, VB doesn't move. So there's no value for P. So inside here, all you can calculate. Once you calculate. Important is the unit of energy, which is in Joule. Okay, minus 16.6 Joule. There's a loss of energy, negative. Okay. So energy loss because of inelastic deformation during the collision. You have loss of energy because you have inelastic deformation, meaning your E, small e there, the small e that you use, the coefficient of constitution is not 1. So it's 0.5, so it's elastic. So inelastic, you expect loss of energy. Okay? All right, so I think we stop here and then we continue our class uh, next week. Right, let me stop the recording.